The movie opens with two people, a woman and a man, answering questions about their lives, and their answers are always opposites. The woman, Claudia Torini, says that she likes waking up late in the morning and the man, Stefan Parisi, says that he likes to wake up early. Claudia likes to take things easy, and Stefan hates laziness. Claudia is vegetarian and Stefan is a carnivore. She prefers white wine and he likes red. Claudia is a divorce lawyer and a single mother to a son, and Stefan is a couples therapist who has recently divorced from his wife. There is almost nothing that they have in common, except for maybe one thing, both of them want to find love. In the following scene, Stefan is running late for something important, and because he's driving like crazy, he ends up in an accident. In a flashback to four months back, Stefan is working with a couple with problems in the bedroom. The man has a lot of fantasies with more than one woman, and the woman has fantasies with the delivery man. Stefan is very calm and patient, and tries to help the couple find a common ground in their relationship. It's still a quite stressful job, though, and when he leaves the office, he wants to relax and forget about people's problems. Instead, he has to listen to his own wife complaining about things that don't interest him. They have been separated for some time already, but Stefan doesn't know how to talk to her about getting a divorce since she keeps avoiding the subject and pretending everything is fine. He asks for his father-in-law's help, but the man thinks they should continue together, living as if nothing is wrong in the marriage. Stefan refuses to continue on like this. He tells his father-in-law he can't settle for a fake relationship. His father-in-law says okay then evict Stefan from his office, since he's the one paying. Stefan forces a smile on his face and accepts his homeless fate. Next day, he goes house hunting. He parks his car in a very tight spot next to two other cars, one of which belongs to Claudia. He can't open his door without hitting her car, so he politely asks her to reverse her car so that he can leave without any issues. Claudia leaves her own car in a huff and pretends not to listen to him until he yells to catch her attention. She tells him that she can't do anything because she's late and that it's not her problem if he can't leave. Stefan keeps trying to make her change her mind and she tells him not to raise his voice at her. Stefan laughs in disbelief that the woman is being so difficult, but Claudia gives him a speech about how if she were a man, he wouldn't even park in the spot because it was obviously too narrow. Since she's a woman, he's bothering her to waste her time taking her car off only for him to get out easily. Stefan annoyingly retorts that she's wasting time talking back to him instead of moving her car. Claudia gets even more angry and tells him that she knows his type, that he thinks the world revolves around him and feels superior to others. Then she tells him to keep attacking her to feel more masculine and leaves him there with his mouth hanging open. He badmouths her as he removes his car from the spot and because he's so angry, he doesn't see another car right behind him and bumps into it. He finally arrives at the house he is going to check. It's a big house with a place where he can build his office. There's a lawyer who does the same living opposite to the house. Stefan doesn't know if he has enough money to pay for the house. Luckily for him, he meets a childhood friend of his who actually owns the house, Alessandro Torini. He's a handsome man, and he's a few pounds thinner because Stefan almost doesn't recognize him. They go out to have a coffee and reminisce about good childhood moments between them. Alessandro now has a son called Valerio, and he says that sometimes he looks at his son and wonders who made him have a kid. Stefan's wife calls him and momentarily interrupts the conversation between the former friends. After the call, Alessandro jokingly says women are all the same, and Stefan replies it's just a matter of mediation. He also mediates the value of the house and reaches a fair price for him. He moves out the same day. His first day in the new house, he hears a commotion in the house next to his. A man is yelling for a woman to appear while he pounds on the door. When Stefan wonders what's going on, he says that the lawyer that works there is hiding his wife from him. The lawyer in question opens the door and what a surprise it is for Stefan when he sees his neighbor is the same woman he got into an argument with, Claudia. Claudia is less than impressed to see him there and thinks he's a backup for the man pounding on her door. Stefan quickly explains that he's just her new neighbor, and the noise they were making was bothering him. The man keeps yelling for his wife and Stefan intervenes in his favor, telling Claudia to let him see the wife and solve the issue. Claudia ignores him and repeats to the man that if he wants to see his wife, he needs to go to court. Before the man can answer, Stefan asks if Claudia was born a shrew or if she graduated in it. Claudia replies that she graduated in it, different from him, who was born an idiot. She tells the man to go away because he's invading her property, and Stefan intervenes again by saying that he can stay at his house as a guest. She threatens to call the police so the man leaves, but Stefan goes after him to say that the police can't do anything if he's his guest. As he enters the elevator after the man explains it to him, Claudia closes the door on their faces and goes back to her house. Once again Stefan is bested by Claudia, something he finds infuriating. He tries to go back to his floor with the man still in the elevator, but the elevator stops working. The man is claustrophobic and has a panic attack that sends him to the hospital. Stefan watches as the man is carted to the hospital while sitting next to a teenage boy. The boy looks sad as he watches the commotion, not that Stefan notices. He's still angry with Claudia and even complains to the boy that the man is only going to the hospital because of a woman. 
He says behaving badly is in a woman's DNA. Then he starts talking about the lawyer. He calls her a beautiful shrew. The boy next to him suddenly takes a picture of him and then goes away without saying a word, leaving a bewildered Stefan behind. Unbeknownst to Stefan, the boy is Claudia's son, Luca. Luca has nothing against his mother, in fact, he loves her and cares for her a lot. The truth is that Claudia can seem as a harsh and severe woman, but she's soft when she's not wearing her lawyer persona. She takes care of her son by herself and they have a great relationship. The only issue is that Luca doesn't like to bother her, so he doesn't tell her that he's being bullied at school or that there's a girl he likes. Claudia has a big audition against the same man that was pestering her at her house. Her client, the man's wife, didn't want to take things too far, but Claudia advises her that they have to defend themselves against men like him, who are violent and absent from their families' lives. While Claudia helps another couple in a divorce, Stefan tries to help a couple salvage their marriage. In the end, neither one of them were successful. The wife Claudia is trying to help, wants to back away from the suit against her husband, and the husband Stefan is trying to help and decides to leave his wife. Moving on, Stefan goes to Alessandro's birthday party with his wife. There he has another big surprise when Alessandro introduces him to his sister, Claudia. Apparently Claudia was also Stefan's childhood friend, though they didn't recognize each other. When Claudia sees Stefan there with her brother, her smile slowly vanishes from her face. Stefan feels awkward and Alessandro quickly makes his escape after reintroducing each other. In a flashback to when they were kids, Stefan and Claudia were boyfriend and girlfriend for a brief time. Back to the present day, Claudia and Stefan exchange sharp words when her son Luca appears. Stefan instantly recognizes him as the boy that took a picture of him. Luca smirks at him before he walks away and Stefan asks Claudia if it's her son. She sarcastically asks if he discovered it alone, and he weakly laughs in embarrassment. Stefan extends a branch for Claudia and asks if they can start over. Claudia replies that she's going to think about it. They are interrupted by Claudia's friend, Carolina and Claudia leaves them under the excuse that she wants to sing. Carolina asks Stefan if he ever thought about appearing on TV because he has a piercing gaze and Stefan denies. She gives him her producer's card and leaves him be. Claudia starts singing at the karaoke and her voice is terrible. Stefan thinks it's funny and chuckles as he watches her. A few moments later, he sees Luca eating while staring at him and calls him. He tells the boy that when he said his mother was a shrew, he was only joking. Luca replies that he likes her and takes another picture of Stefan. In the middle of the birthday party, Alessandro and his girlfriend start fighting because she found out he cheated on her. Everyone is staring at the couple fighting so Alessandro calls Stefan to help him out since he's a couple's therapist. Stefan starts whispering things that Alessandro can say to his girlfriend to make peace with her, and he quotes a philosopher. Claudia watches from a distance with Carolina and Carolina remarks that not everyone can quote a philosopher like Stefan can. Claudia pretends she doesn't care, but deep down she's impressed with Stefan's silver tongue. When the party is over and Stefan is returning with his wife, she can't stop talking about their relationship as if they are still together. Stefan loses his patience with her and complains about her unending ranting about unimportant things. She doesn't listen to him and continues talking 10 miles a minute until Stefan has had enough. He breaks the car and leaves it to go home walking. Next day, Claudia is called to Luca's school because he got into a fight. His nose is bleeding when she arrives and she asks why he punched someone. He replies he was the one being punched. Claudia gets angry and threatens to sue the school for negligence, and she promises that if the boy who punched Luca isn't expelled, she's going to sue all the parents in his classroom. Luca tells her that if she does that, everyone is going to want to hurt him, but Claudia promises that she'll make them be expelled too. After school, Luca goes to Stefan's office to talk to him. He asks Stefan if he's willing to be his therapist for one euro, but Stefan says he can't without his mother's consent. Luca reminds him he called her a shrew, so Stefan accepts to talk to him. Luca talks to Stefan about a current dream he has in which he's standing in front of a hoop holding a basketball. All his classmates are there watching and some of them call him fatty. In the dream, when he throws the ball, everyone dies. Stefan asks how many are dead in the dream, and Luca says 321. Everyone that dies in his dream are people that hurt him some way. Stefan asks why he counts the people dying, and Luca weirdly answers that when he turns himself in, he won't forget his victims. Stefan realizes that the boy has some issues and wonders if he has ever talked to his mother about it. Luca replies that Claudia won't listen to him. He pays a euro to Stefan and leaves, scheduling another appointment for the next day. Later that day, Claudia is getting ready to go out for the night. She's putting on makeup as she explains to Luca that his uncle Alessandro is going to take him to his house while she's gone. Luca asks why he can't stay at home alone, and Claudia replies that she's going to tango class and will be back late. Luca starts playing video games while his mother gets dressed and Claudia asks him what he did during the day. He rolls his eyes and replies that he went to see his analyst. Immediately Claudia goes after him to ask what he meant, and Luca tells her that he's seeing Stefan. Claudia gets mad in an instant and goes after Stefan with half her makeup done and a fancy robe. Stefan is shocked to see her ranting about laws and his brain doesn't really catch up to how she looks and what she's saying. Claudia threatens to sue him if he keeps seeing her son, 
then storms out, leaving a dismayed Stefan behind. When he finally catches up to what happened, he rings her bell. When she opens the door, he tells her that he didn't treat anyone, that her son invaded his office to talk to him. Claudia closes the door on his face, but Stefan isn't going to give up on giving her the facts. He tells her that Luca needs help and that he understands why with a mother like her. Claudia threatens him again and Stefan retorts that someone needs to take care of Luca since Claudia doesn't. She's offended and closes the door on his face again. Stefan rings her bell. Claudia says she's going to call the police if he doesn't leave, and Stefan jokingly asks if she can call the fireman since he locked himself out of his house. Claudia goes to tango class and she dances with the teacher, a bulky man with dark features. They dance really close to each other and she can't take her eyes off him. Meanwhile, Stefan is out running when he meets Carolina. She heavily flirts with him, which makes him a bit bashful, and then asks him to choose her. Stefan patiently explains that he has just gotten out of a bad relationship where the woman told him what to do, and then leaves. Claudia and her teacher almost kiss in her building's elevator after her class, but before their lips can touch, Stefan walks in and breaks the moment. Claudia rolls her eyes in disbelief and separates from her teacher. The teacher speaks Spanish and Stefan does too, so they start talking about Valencia in Spain and the girls there. Claudia doesn't understand anything but she's still really annoyed with Stefan's interruption. When they get to their floor, Stefan wishes the teacher good luck. Claudia opens her house to the man and excuses herself to talk to Stefan. Again she tells him that her son doesn't need his help and that he doesn't have any problems. Stefan tries to make her leave but she's relentless. He starts listing the problems he noticed with Luca after speaking to him for an hour. He has low self-esteem and suffers bullying at school. Claudia reminds him that he also suffered bullying and Stefan says he did. That's why he understands Luca. He has no friends. Claudia tells him that at least he had her as a friend at school, and Stefan agrees but repeats that Luca doesn't have anyone. The boy dreams of eliminating his classmates which is not a good sign. Claudia didn't know about that, and Stefan says that it's strange that he prefers to speak about his problems to a stranger than to her. Claudia is offended that he's judging her motherhood when he doesn't even know what it is like to have a kid. Stefan says that he's going to discuss matters with his patient. Claudia is almost crying when she asks what Stefan wants from her, and he abruptly kisses her, ending their discussion for the moment. When they separate, Claudia asks if he's happy and he replies that the kiss could have been better. She stomps away huffing which is incredibly amusing to Stefan. As soon as she enters her house, she kisses the tango teacher and asks how her kiss was. The teacher replies he's in paradise. Claudia smirks and goes to her bedroom feeling accomplished knowing that Stefan was lying. Meanwhile Stefan is at war with himself. He doesn't understand why he kissed Claudia, especially since he thinks she's such a shrew of a woman. She certainly is not the girl he used to like when he was younger. In the middle of his crisis, his bell rings again. His face brightens when he thinks it's Claudia, which goes against everything he was saying before about her. When he opens the door, though, it's not Claudia there waiting, but Carolina. She tells him she doesn't want a relationship, only a few hours with him having fun. Before Stefan can deny her again, she opens her jacket and he's a goner. The following morning, Carolina is there waiting for him. He had asked her the night before to leave after they were intimate, but she ended up staying. She's reading his book about opposites attracting each other, which she finds really interesting. The book is in a mass of Stefan's experience counseling couples. Carolina instantly sees the book as something that can become a movie or a series for TV, and Stefan thinks it's worth a try if she can make it happen. He subtly asks her to leave and she does. In Claudia's house, the tango teacher is also still there after their passionate night. He's undressed in the kitchen when Luca arrives and takes a picture of him. Luca asks him why he speaks Spanish, and the teacher replies that he's from Spain. Luca grabs his document that he grabbed from his wallet and it says that he's actually Italian. The teacher explains that he lies because no one would do lessons with an Italian tango teacher. Luca says that he will keep his secret if he leaves. Claudia arrives in the kitchen and is surprised to see Luca there. After all, he should be at his uncle's house. She fumbles to explain why there was a strange man there with her, saying that the man was only her friend who needed a place to sleep. Luca says he understands but asks why her friend was yelling so late in the evening. Claudia doesn't know what to say and pushes him to get ready for school. Before she takes Luca to school, Claudia decides to confront Stefan to start her day well. When he opens his door after she glued her finger to the bell, she slaps him and tells him she's a great kisser. She leaves a grinning Stefan behind. During his couple's therapy session, Stefan tells a couple that they should never lie to each other, because lies are the end of a relationship. At the same time, Claudia is with a client and she tells her to lie in a convincing way so no one will discover the truth. Later on, as she's leaving the supermarket, she meets with another client and asks, why the woman didn't call her back. As they talk, Claudia finds out the client had given up on the divorce, and has decided to give her husband a second chance. Her husband, not knowing that Claudia was his wife's lawyer, tells her that the only reason his wife had given up was because of the shrew of a lawyer she found. Because of her, they decided to get therapy and even found a great therapist. Claudia is foaming at the mouth in anger. She knows the therapist is Stefan. Not only did he call her a bad mother and kiss her, he's also stealing clients from her. 
It's inadmissible. She calls her brother to complain and asks him to kick Stefan out of his house. When she gets home, she rips his sign off and writes a note saying he has to leave. Stefan only takes a deep breath when he sees it. Later on, while he's parking his car, Luca suddenly enters it and orders him to drive because his bully wants to beat him again. Stefan asks what's the problem and Luca tells him he likes this girl who his bully, Carlo, also likes. Stefan decides to talk to Carlo to solve the situation, but when he confronts the boy, Carlo kicks him and runs. Luca approaches him asking if he's going to his birthday party, and then wondering if he's okay because he's shaking on the ground. It's Luca's birthday. No one from his school is there, only his family. Stefan arrives at the party, much to Claudia's surprise since she didn't invite him. Stefan tells her that he came to Luca's birthday and he gives him the best gift ever, a set of drums. Luca's really happy with the gift, but his mother wants to eliminate Stefan for good. He tries to explain to her that drums are therapeutic and good for Luca's confidence. It's also a way to help him fit in. Luca tells them that he will never fit in. No one from his school came to his party, they all went to Carlo's party. Stefan tells him that they are going to crash the party, then. The two of them go to Carlo's house where a huge party is happening. The party even has security, and they don't let Luca enter because he's not on the guest list. Stefan has a plan to ruin the party and invites Claudia to come with. They take the cake that is supposed to go to the party and go to a park, all three of them. They have a great time together there, it's almost as if they were a family. When Claudia and Stefan are alone again, she jokingly tells him that she knows he's the type to use the son to get to the mother. Stefan only laughs at her. While they are talking and reminiscing about their childhood, Stefan reminds Claudia that she used to know when he had a problem by only looking at him. Now, though, she doesn't know how to look at her son and recognize that he needs help. He wonders what happened to her that she changed so much from the little girl who dreamed of being a zoologist to help the animals to a ruthless lawyer. Claudia cracks a joke and changes the subject. Back at home, Stefan grabs his memory box and starts going through it. Claudia does the same in her own home. They see their pictures, letters and even newspaper clippings of when they were about Luca's age and the best of friends. Next day, at both their jobs they come to a conundrum. Stefan has a couple that don't need therapy, but a divorce and Claudia has a client who only needs therapy instead of a divorce. They exchange their clients and it works really well for them all. Almost as if one job complemented the other. Stefan invites Claudia for lunch, and though she denies it first, after he pushes her, she accepts it. After lunch, they go on a walk on the beach and talk more about their lives. Claudia finds out that Stefan left his wife. He explains that she wasn't the same woman he married. Claudia scoffs and says it's typical for a man to place the blame on the woman. Stefan then asks what happened to Luca's father since she knows so much about relationships. It's an uncomfortable topic for Claudia, because she instantly gets defensive. Stefan goes back on what he said and explains that he only wants to understand her better. Claudia tells him that when she found out she was pregnant, she also found out that the man she loved was actually married. She was really happy that they were going to have a baby and when she went to tell him at his house, his wife opened the door. Because she was lied to and betrayed, she's afraid of trusting another man again. They hear some horses neighing and find a stable full of horses. Stefan mounts one and asks Claudia to come with him. The owner of the horses sees them and Claudia quickly mounts the horse and they run away. They ride the horse on the beach and then make out on a blanket. The following day, Stefan receives another sign as a gift for his last one. Claudia opens her door and they smile at each other with starry eyes. Later on, Luca calls Stefan, not his mom, to go to his school because he got into trouble again. This time Carlo stole all his clothes because of the stolen birthday cake. The principal thinks that Stefan is Claudia's husband and Luca's father, and Stefan doesn't deny it. When they leave the school, Stefan takes Luca shopping for new clothes. Luca finally wears clothes that are for his age as a teenager, so he's really happy. He tells Stefan that he would make a great father and Stefan tells him not to get used to it. Luca sadly confesses that he never met his own father, and that even though his mom thinks he doesn't need a father, he thinks she's wrong. Stefan asks why she thinks that and Luca says that she thinks men have nothing to teach. Stefan asks Luca how he imagines his father and Luca doesn't hesitate to say he imagines a man like Stefan. Stefan is touched with Luca's admittance, and maybe if things work out with Claudia, he can be that man to him. Stefan decides to take Claudia on a spontaneous trip to Paris. They are waiting at the airport, but the flight is cancelled. He's not willing to let his idea go. They stay in their town, but Stefan acts as if they are in Paris, pointing out tourist places and telling her their story. Claudia thinks it's all funny and romantic. They dance under the night sky in an imaginative Paris, but one thing is very real, they're slowly building love. It starts raining and Stefan kisses Claudia under the rain as if it's a romantic movie that she loves watching. They stay up all night and watch the sunrise. When they finally get home, they have a morning filled with passion. Later on, Alessandro asks Claudia how it was but she refuses to answer. When he asks Stefan, he can barely keep the details to himself. Unbeknown to them, Alessandro is meddling. 
He asks both of them, separately, what they are going to give each other for Valentine's Day, and also tries to get them to admit they are in love. Neither one of them is willing to admit it. Claudia tells Alessandro that she wants a romantic Valentine's Day since she has never had one and he subtly relays everything to Stefan, so that he gives her the perfect, romantic day, just as she wants. When he finishes telling Stefan everything Claudia wants without saying that she wants it, Stefan doesn't believe she would like something so corny like that. When the couple sees each other again, Claudia asks Stefan if they are in love, and he nervously denies it. He asks her if she wants to do anything for Valentine's Day and she pretends she didn't even know it's Valentine's Day. Stefan also spends a lot of time with Luca. The boy tells him that he wants to go to a Valentine's Day party that one of his classmates is going to have. He only wants to go because Carlo said he's going to confess his love to the girl Luca likes, Gianna, and he can't let him do it. Stefan thinks it's a terrible idea for him to go without a plan to talk to Gianna. Luca asks him what he would do in his place and Stefan replies that the important thing is what Luca wants to do. In the following scene, Stefan is at a jewelry store looking for a gift for Claudia. In the evening, he's getting ready to go out to have dinner with her, when Carolina suddenly arrives. He's wearing only underpants and a shirt, not appropriate when you are in a relationship and he knows it. Carolina is so excited that she doesn't care about his state of undress because she managed to sell his book to a TV channel. Stefan is also very happy about the news, except when he learns that it's in another city. He would have to move out for three or four months during the production. It's a really good opportunity for him, but he wants to think about it first. He would have to give up his relationship with Claudia too. He asks Carolina if he can think about it, and she says no. Then she starts to take off her coat and tells him they need to celebrate. Meanwhile, Claudia is waiting for Stefan at a restaurant. She waits for a long time and then calls him. Stefan lies to her and says that he had an issue with the patient and that he won't be able to make it. With nothing else to do, Claudia leaves. As she's leaving though, her heels break and she starts crying. It was her first Valentine's Day and she was stood up. When she arrives home, still crying and heartbroken, she leaves her gift at his door. Then, she goes to Luca's room to look at him while he's sleeping to remind herself that there's one person in her life that loves her unconditionally. Next day, Stefan, feeling guilty, buys Claudia flowers. Claudia is in her morning run when Carolina, who doesn't know about her relationship with Stefan, appears. Carolina tells her she came to say goodbye to Claudia because she's leaving for Milan. She asks Claudia if Stefan didn't tell her, which confuses Claudia because she didn't even know they knew each other. Carolina explains that Stefan is her neighbor and that she gave him a gift for Valentine's Day, a show on TV. Carolina goes on to tell Claudia that she told him the night before and that they are leaving next week. Claudia pretends she's fine and doesn't care about Stefan at all. After her run, she vents to her brother that Carolina has always been jealous of her and that she finally won. What she's really mad about is Stefan and his lies. While she is talking to Alessandro, he accidentally spills that he told Stefan what she wanted for Valentine's Day. Claudia gets mad because she feels played, and that Stefan pretended to be someone he wasn't and she fell for it. Stefan realizes that Claudia is angry with him when she doesn't return his calls. He sent her many bouquets of flowers and a voice message pleading that she answer him because the following day will be an important day for him, the day he signs his divorce papers. As she hears his voice messages, she cuts all the flowers he sent her. Luca tries to talk to his mother but she cuts him off saying that she's not in the mood to talk. In the following morning, Stefan is surprised when his wife, soon to be ex, arrives with Claudia as her lawyer. Claudia wants to end him and to take even his underclothes on the divorce agreement. She starts by telling the judge that Stefan is a liar, a manipulator, a person who knows exactly how to use words to attract people. Stefan tries to interrupt her to explain his side of things but she's not having it. She goes on a tangent talking about their relationship instead of talking about his relationship with his wife, who is very confused about the whole situation. Claudia asks Stefan questions and he finally admits he spent Valentine's Day with Carolina. He fumbles to explain but none of his excuses are good enough to make up for the fact that he lied to her and stood her up. With all the confusion between them, the judge decides to postpone the hearing. Stefan's ex slaps him before leaving, and then Claudia also slaps him. Two months later, Stefan's TV program is very successful. When he's filming one of the episodes, his cell phone rings. He sees Claudia's name, but it's not her calling. It's Luca. He tells Stefan that he needs his help because he's at the place where his father works. He asked his mother for the address and she gave it to him. Luca tells Stefan that his father is the only one who can change his mother's mind about a job offer she received to work in Canada. Stefan is confused, but before he can understand the situation, Luca turns off the cell phone because Claudia arrives. When Claudia is at home, she sees the pictures that Luca has taken in the last couple of months. There are many pictures with Stefan and she wishfully stares at them. Luca sees her with the pictures and tells her that Stefan was with him on Valentine's Day. He explains that he went to Carlo's party by himself. He called Stefan to pick him up and asked him not to tell his mother, so Stefan lied to her for him. 
Claudia feels like an idiot for not knowing the full story and not giving Stefan a chance to explain. She jumped to conclusions because of her trauma with her former relationships, so she instantly thought he cheated on her. She also apologizes to Luca because she didn't realize that he's growing up. Luca shows her a picture of the three of them together smiling on his birthday, and tells her that Milan is not too far. Meanwhile, Stefan has to listen to his ex-father-in-law talk about his new book on relationships. He starts remembering his moments with Claudia and how much he misses her. His ex-father-in-law says that true love doesn't exist but Stefan strongly disagrees. He knows it exists because he had Claudia. He says in front of the cameras that he had love and he ruined it. Then, he storms out of the studio with Carolina yelling after him that he can't leave. His mind is already made, and he runs out of the studio to catch a plane and go back to Claudia. Claudia is also going to Milan and starts calling him to let him know. When Stefan goes to pick up his phone, he doesn't pay attention to where he's going. Neither is Claudia. In a second, Stefan crashes his car on Claudia's. The collision is so strong that his car overturns. At the hospital, Claudia is fuming while being escorted in a wheelchair back to her room. She wants to know who the guy who hit her is because she wants to sue him. Both her arm and leg are broken. While she's screaming at the hospital's personnel, someone calls her name and snaps her attention to them. It's Stefan. He also has a broken arm and leg, just like Claudia. They get side by side to talk, and Stefan tells her he doesn't want her to go to Canada because he loves her. Claudia is confused. She asks if Luca told him that they were going to Canada, and then starts laughing because he played both of them. They try to get closer to kiss but it's difficult with their wheelchairs. When they find the perfect position, though, they finally kiss after two months apart. 